Hi, my name is Jim Harris. Welcome to my shop. Today I'm going to be turning what I call layered or stacked bowls, such as these. Now, I suffer from the same disease a lot of turners suffer from wooditis because I got so much wood I don't know what to do with it. And I don't make uh, I don't make furniture, and I don't make little boxes, square boxes, so I have all this piece of wood here that, um, what am I going to do with it? So what I've been doing with them is I've been cutting them and gluing them up. Now, a few years ago, Lee Sky of our club did a video where they made these little box, little uh, bowls with different woods, they're really pretty, and uh, he made reference to a fellow named Jim McPhail in North Carolina, which I would certainly recommend you go take a look at. And he used a lot of burls and stuff. And I did some little bowls. I did some tiny ones like that. But one of the problems is they use super glue, thick super glue. And my experience with super glue is it comes apart. So I use a different method. I started using the yellow glue. And I glue them up and I leave them overnight and then I turn them. Now, how I start with it is I use, and they were all using uh, glue blocks. And what I do is I, do is I create a mortise and use my dovetail to hold it in. And, um, I have all these different woods. I have veneers that I use, I put together. Some of these woods, I don't even remember what they are. Um, this here is a piece of uh, Cuban mahogany with a black and yellow veneers, which I have over here. And then this wood here was some kind of pine wood. And uh, this, is a, this is what it was. You even got nail holes in it. Came from something, but beautiful grain to it. And um, so, so this is a this is yellow heart with um, butternut and uh, a thick black veneer. Um, so what I do is I layer these up with the different woods. This is black and white veneer with uh, mahogany, uh, Cuban mahogany, Honduras mahogany, and then some babinga in between. So. Anyway, that's what I want to demonstrate to you. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do, how I start one, and then I have one I'm going to turn on you, for you. Now, a friend of mine, um, Jerry, told me that uh, I, was turning, I was turning this piece here, and he came up to me and he says, Jim, you're not following the golden rule. And I didn't have no idea what the golden rule was. So now I found out it's where you um, don't start something right in the middle, but it, you have a rule of, of three. See, so you draw, put in a three, and it's two thirds in the bottom, one third in the top. Of course, it depends on what you're doing. On this one up project I'm going to do now, I'm going to do some wood burning on it, so it's going to be 50 50. But anyway, <clears throat> I want to show you how I, I basically turn it uh, right here. And, I'm initially going to put my tail stock up. This is how I start one. And all I'm doing now is just get it in the round. And this piece here is, a, is two inches. And I could have made a two inch bowl out of it, but I, I get more out of it by layering it up with all these different woods. So uh, all I'm going to do now is basically put it in a round, but once you glue it up, you have to re-round it because of, of the different aspects of the wood.
Now, how I initially started this was I, I did a two and one eighth inch uh, forced a bit and did a mortise on the bottom. So that's how it's connected here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And this will be the bottom of the uh, piece. And then I'm going to split it uh, in two. And this will be the top and the bottom of the layer. And I'll go ahead and put something like a maple in between. Or this is bass. This is a basswood here that works well. And so I'll put that in between there. Well, I've already got it marked off here. What I do is I take the 2 8 inch and just tap it in there. You can do it with calipers or however. This works well for me. So I'm going to do now. Make sure it's tight. You don't have to go very deep. down about an eighth or three sixteenths of an inch. A little deeper. I have a set of, of dovetail uh, cutters. You don't really need this per se because you can go in there. But if you have them, it makes it a lot easier. Raise this up a little more. All you need. I usually sand it out. A lot of times I like to put, if you want to put some kind of decoration in the beading or something like that, I'll just go in there like this. Come back. Saying that up a little. 
Then what I do is I'm going to come back again. Not necessary to get it in perfect round because when you start adding the um, other elements, you're going to have to reround it because they're not fitting there as quickly as straight. So what I do is it's two inches to follow the golden rule at a um, an inch and a quarter and on the and this will be the top this will be the bottom so what I'm going to next do is I take a parting tool draw a line I next take a parting tool I'm going to do is part two and a half, and what I'm going to, I'll curve this part here, and I'll do that now, because this is going to be the bottom, so I'm going to put a little curve on it. I'm going to part it in two, and then I'm going to make this where it's flat, I'll use this just like here, and then I'll reverse this and do the same thing on this side. So. Now, if I want to put a foot on it, I can do that. You can see it's starting to get rounder here. Just... And that's how I start them. 
And then once I'll, I'll split it, I'll use a narrow parting tool. Put it in half, and usually at the end, I'll cut it with a saw. Okay? Now, so I'll do the mortise on this to start off with. Put it in there, then I'll put the mortise on this side. I'll reverse it. I split them after I split them, and then make sure each of these sides are absolutely flat. I have one here that I've already glued up. And it takes a while to glue these. Not only you have to split them, but you have to glue them up, and I usually leave them overnight. I mean, it's not a quick process. Put in clamps, put it down. That's all you got to do to it. So. Also, one of the things I do also is I mark them before I split them. So I have an alignment of all the grains. So what I do is I, I mark them so I have an alignment of all the grains. So when I glue them up, I can line them back so they'll I have dovetail jaws here, but you don't necessarily have to have them. Clean this off. Bring my tailpiece up, tighten it in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get this in round. I have, uh, this is Cuban mahogany with paduke, and I have red and white veneer. And like I say, in the middle, I'm going to do some wood burning.
change into a round nose. Part of the problem that you run into is that the part of the problem you run into is that the Paduk is a harder wood than the Cuban mahogany. And I got a couple of spots here. Take a scraper. Sandy will take care of the rest of the outside. Um, put a little bead in there.
is basically it. All I need to do now is sand the outside and haul it out, and it's finished. I'm not going to put a finish on it because I'm going to do wood burning, and I don't want to burn through the finish. And um, when I will finish it, once I finish it, I usually put a coat of linseed oil in it and some um, seal coat, and then I use the Axe abrasive sanding paste and the Axe polish restorer. Works great. I, I like that. I've been happy with that. And uh, that's what I've been using. So anyway, that's what I'm, that's basically it. A different shade and I got to find one that'll fit. I did one here. Let's see which one it is. This one here and I had a lighter wood I was using but it wasn't doing right so I ended up putting this wood in. So you want to do the contrast between the lighter wood and the darker woods. And here's the veneers. This is the black, and I put uh, the white between the two blacks. Uh, yellow and black works great. It's a very nice combination. Um, I did that on a lot of them. Uh, this is yellow heart. Uh, this is the black. Um, this is yellow and black veneer, and this is basswood here. And um, this is walnut. So, by, but putting, and I always put the, the dark to the light and the light to the dark. And they're pretty easy to do. They don't take a long time. Uh, seems like you take more time on gluing them up. And I like to put some kind of, if I can, some kind of rim on the top, a foot on them if you want to. And this, this other one I'm gonna do is a, I'm gonna do a foot on it. This one I was working here. I'm going to do a foot on it, and, uh, and you see the size of this. This is five and a half inches across, and uh, it'll be about three, three and a half inches tall. So these layered bowls are not the little ones. 